Hey there, boys and girls, guys and gals, friends, Romans, countrymen, uh, others. Uh, on behalf of myself and our entire team, I'd like to thank you for joining our webinar this evening. So as usual, if you would please uh, give me a one in the little chat box there to let me know that you can see me and you can hear me. Por favor, would really appreciate it. Anybody will do. Just a one in the chat box. All right, perfect. All right, so again, thank you all for being here. I'm getting started straight up time. So um, I hope that um, you're all doing well. I hope that you're all safe. Um, obviously this has been quite a week or it's been longer than a week depending on where you are in the world. Um, I'm here in North Texas in the good old US of A. And um, for us, I think this is just starting to get real in the last three or four days. Um, I just got back from uh, a volleyball trip to Orlando, and then a little vacation in Gulf Shores. I was sick a bunch of it, so that kind of sucked, but it is what it is. Uh, luckily, I just had, I think, the regular flu, um, not the, uh, the dangerous one that's going around. So um, uh, very blessed on that. Uh, again, I hope you all are keeping yourselves safe. I um, also hope that you're not panicking too much. Um, I think personally that the panic on this is potentially going to make things worse um, because the, the stuff that's going to be there without the panic is going to be there. But if we panic, then that's just going to compound everything. Um, everything closing and, you know, I think people are going to go bankrupt and all kinds of crazy stuff is going to happen. Um, but hopefully it won't. I'm definitely praying about it. And if you're a person of faith, I hope that you uh, will join me in, in praying for that. And of course, for everybody that's affected, um, whether it's a, a job loss or hours loss or, you know, things people don't even think about little things that really matter a lot to some people, you know, like, you know, there's some kids in my local area who had a play that got canceled, you know, they've been, you know, I'm sure that it'll get rescheduled, not just canceled, but, um, you know, people, another friend of mine is, um, went all the way to Florida from Texas to get on a cruise and the cruises are canceled and, uh, that kind of stuff. But obviously that all pairs in comparison to, you know, people actually dying or, you know, getting really sick and, you know, not dying. So, Again, I hope that you're getting your information from reliable sources and, and not kind of from the panic. Um, I tend to avoid the media during times like this. I hate to say it, but um, I get most of my news about things that are important from the BBC, uh, which is kind of sad that I'm an American and you know I feel better getting my news from a foreign country. Um, there's also a really good station in Germany that I get my news from too. And um, it's just that it's not filtered the same way as it is here. You know, it's a different filter. You know, um, U.S. news is. I think everyone knows is only controlled by, you know, a handful of people. And so I think that a lot of times there's lots of narratives that are, you know, played out on there in addition to, you know, the actual news. So uh, not going to get into conspiracy theories tonight. Um, but um, anyway, all right. So let me see here. All right. All right. So um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and jump on in. Um, so um, tonight what we're going to talk about, so I think, I guess we took a week off and we bumped a little bit. So sorry about that. Like I said, I was out of town and I was sick. I mean, sorry, I was sick. Then I was out of town and then I thought I was going to have Wi-Fi and I didn't. I mean, they had Wi-Fi, but it was horrible Wi-Fi. So it wasn't fast enough to support a webinar. So I'm sorry about that. I apologize for that. Um, also had to, you know, basically, I haven't done business in well over a week at all. Any business of any kind I haven't conducted in well over a week. So um I'm going to get back to that probably on Monday, God willing, get back to uh, full speed. So um, those of you who are doing business with me, I see a couple of you on here. Thank you for your patience. I really appreciate it um, during this time. All right. So um, what we're going to talk about tonight is going to be, let me go ahead and share. All right. Um, if someone could let me know if you could see the slide, please. Just give me a two if you can see the slide on the screen, por favor, let's see here. And I don't have Josh with me tonight, so it's just going to be me and you guys. All right, perfect. All right, so what we're gonna talk about tonight is kind of the next step in the process, um, which is gonna be creating your course outline. Now, this is there's certain parts of the course where I have an exact process, and I'll tell you exactly, I do, you know, this, step one, two, three, four, five, or I use this software and step one, two, three, four, five. This is one of those uh, things in the course where it's not as important, you know, what my method is. Um, it's important that you have a method and it's important that you're consistent with it. Um, just so, um, you know, 
if you don't have a good course outline, um, it's, it's as valuable for you as a course creator as it is for, you know, a student of a course, right? Um, because depending on your topic and how vast it is, um, it could be really, really easy to forget things that are important. Um, or it could be, uh, you could forget to order things in such a way that it would make it challenging for course members. So, you know, like, um, one of the courses that I created not too long ago, uh, was uh, focused primarily on, um, uh, uh, PBNs, private blog networks. If you're not a marketing person or online marketing person, you might not know what that is. Um, but, um, you know, the steps, so there are several steps, but if you, you know, did step three before you did step two, it wouldn't work, right? Or, or whatever, right? So it was very important that you did them in order. And in a course like that, you know, I was very specific, you know, and said, hey, you know, and I actually went and did it, you know, step by step by step. And for me, this was important because in a course like that, it's very likely that my students were going to actually use the training themselves maybe once, maybe twice. But after that, they were going to hand it over to, you know, a virtual assistant or, you know, a, a, a lower paid employee, right? Um, so it's very important that it's something that's very easy, you know, to systemize and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, sorry, I had to check something really quick. Okay, here we go. Um, my kids got an extra week on spring break. Uh, if you have kids and that's the thing you probably did too. So, um, it's awesome, but you know, it means we get a little, another week where, uh, makes challenging or work a little bit more challenging, but I'm certainly okay with that. So sorry about the digression, but anyway, um, so again, the course outline is going to be extremely important, but how you choose to do it is not. So what I'm going to do tonight, I have a couple of different methods that I use, um, for my courses. And I'm going to show you one of them tonight, and this is my preferred method, um, but different people's brains work differently. So, you know, this is really a for you kind of thing, right? I mean, it's important for the student that you lay it out properly, um, that you outline it properly, but it's, it's, you know, absolutely essential for you to do it in a way that makes it easy for you to understand and to be able to reproduce. Uh, and, you know, something that's easy and quick and all that kind of stuff. So, um, uh, I'm going to show you again. I have two different methods depending on what kind of course, and I'm going to show you one tonight. Um, this one is also cool because I use a third party software and I use a free one, and you probably can get away with the free one. Uh, you should be able to. Um, there are some upgrades and things. I'll, I'll show you those, but most of you should be able to get away with the free, uh, the free software. So, all right, without further ado, the software that I'm going to show you tonight is called MindMeister.com, and if you're familiar with that, um, then that's going to be awesome. It's going to be really accelerated for you. Um, if you're not familiar with that, hopefully by the time we're done, you will be. Um, so um, I'm just going to go on over here. So this is a, a course that I'm, I'm actually working on right now. Um, and so this is a demo, but it's actually real as well. Um, and so MindMeister, again, it's mindmeister.com. So M-I-N-D-M-E-I-S-T-E-R.com. Um, and let me go ahead and drop a thing in there for that. So y'all will be able to see that. Mindmeister.com. Okay. That's to all panelists. So that's great. Do it again. Mindmeister.com. No. So again, I mentioned before that different people have kind of different learning styles. So if you're not a visual, like this type of learner, this may not be the best for you. It may be method number two, which is more of a very text uh, heavy method. I'm not going to cover that tonight though. So again, the site is a mindmeister.com. Um, and uh, there's, yes, there's dozens of sites just like this. Okay. There's tons of sites that are similar to this. Um, I've used probably a dozen of them as I've gone through and tested. Um, this uh, mindmonster.com you can have a you can have a free account okay with up to three mind maps okay if you want more than three then you have to pay um, and I think the entry level one's like it's like four bucks or something uh, let me look real quick okay so four ninety nine a month okay and with that you get unlimited mind maps okay so you know you'll see this here so just when you get there if you're interested you know go to the pricing thing. Um, but I think most of you, at least to start off, can, can get away with the, the free plan um, because you really, you should be able to map out an entire course um, in one mind map, typically. Um, some of you might not, but um, you should be able to. Most of you will be able to. I'm able to do most of my courses, okay, in one. So, 
Um, what I've done here is I've, I've started with a very simple blank mind map, okay? So um, if I were to uh, go, you know, you go, you sign up for your free account, right? Okay, once you do, you know, you'll verify your email, right? And then you're gonna come to a screen that looks like this, all right? And what you're gonna do is uh, for me, again, for this one, I'm using a blank template, so I'm just gonna click right here, okay? And then that's gonna take us to a blank mind map. But I wanna kinda show you, I, I went ahead and I started working on, this is real, like I said, this is actually a course I'm actually developing right now. Um, but, so you're gonna start off with your, your beginning topic, okay? So that's what it's gonna start off with when you start, is just a box like this. And you can click in here and type uh, uh, whatever you want. So I can delete that and put bio course, okay? Uh, I, I like to do uh, caps for the, uh, the main thing because what happens is, as this gets bigger and bigger, <laughs> you can get lost. <laughs> be hard and get lost because you may have things branching off of things branching off of things branching off okay all right so the nomenclature that i choose to use you don't have to okay this is just how i do it um i like to use modules topics and steps okay modules topics and steps so we have the course here all right and so i'm going to start off with uh, a number of modules okay so you see here i've got module one module two module three module four if i want to create a new one I'm, I'm clicking here on, on this, all right? And I'm simply gonna choose this plus button here, okay? And you see it created this little nice sucker down here, okay? And let's say module five, okay? I just type in the box, hit enter, okay? Now I've got module five. I can move this around, okay, just by dragging it, okay? It's very, very simple. The way that this mind map, oper this tool operates is very, I think, very intuitive, very user-friendly. So uh, it's another one of the reasons why I wanted you guys to uh, have access to it. Um, if I don't want to do this anymore, I simply click into it and I can hit delete um, right here, or I can just uh, delete the entire uh, thing. All right. So um, I want to leave this here because I'm going to do I'm going to do another one. Um, so basically, what you're going to do again. So start off, you know, again, if you're going to use my thing, I I, I create modules. So I've got module one, two, three, four, five, right? Um, and then I'm just gonna expand on this one to show you, all right? So, you know, I've got module one, all right? And that's gonna be sleep, okay? So this is a biohacking course. So this, is, this module is going to be about sleep, okay? So it's gonna be biohacking sleep tactics, right? All right? So at the module level, it's gonna be sleep. Okay, another, another uh, module level here, um, another module level here could be, um, wow, there's so many of them. Uh, it could be a diet, or well, we'll call it nutrition, okay? Okay, so um, yeah, all right. So uh, this could be, oh, I'm sorry. You label these, I'm sorry, you label these, it's important, okay? so you don't get lost, okay? So module one, hit enter, okay, nutrition, okay? So, um, man, I am just messing up here. Module, okay, space, two, dash, is the naming convention that I like to do. Sorry, all right. So module two, dash, the topic, which is nutrition, okay? So, you know, however your brain works best, I like to go through and go kind of top to bottom. So I like to go through and come up with what are all of my modules first, okay? What are all of my modules? And if you forget one, that's easy. You can always go and add it, right? So step one, you know, is you're just gonna go and create however many modules that you need, okay? Next level in this is a topic, all right? And a topic for me is going to be you know, kind of like the first, you know, uh, you know, like subcategory, I guess you could call it, right? So the overall course is biohacking. This module is about sleep and this topic is sleep hygiene. And what is sleep hygiene? Sleep hygiene is going to be um, things that you do. Uh, really, this is more of the like, kind of the beginner things that kind of like everybody should do. So these aren't really hacks. These are more like uh, habits that, you know, everyone that's alive pretty much should follow these, okay? So this isn't, at this point, I wouldn't even necessarily call this a hack, you know, a biohack. I'd call it more of a, 
you know, before you can, you know, hack something or improve upon it, you have to understand or implement the basics, right? So topic one would be, again, I've chosen sleep hygiene for this, okay? And then I've moved into steps, okay? And the steps now are the, you know, what you're actually going to do, right? So step one under sleep hygiene, go to bed and get up the same time every day, okay? Step two, uh, keep room at 62 to 68 degrees. That's Fahrenheit, okay? Uh, your sleep area, whatever that is. Keep it at this temperature. It's been proven to help you sleep. Step three, no caffeine or other stimulants within four hours of bed, okay? So you kind of see how this works, right? So all I'm going to do, you know, and I could go, so I like to do this kind of as like my lowest, I, I kind of like to have module as my, my highest level organization in a step, um, but you could go deeper, right? Um, you could go deeper into each of these as well, right? And, you know, you could call it, you could just have more steps or you could call it a sub step or whatever. Um, but for me, you know, each of these, uh, these could be uh, a video, okay? Um, it's likely that, you know, the way that this would work, and those of you who, you know, have taken my courses before, I typically would like to have, you know, what I'd call like a, a module level introduction, okay, video, short one saying, you know, hey guys, this is Steven in this video, we're gonna talk about sleep, okay? And then in that one, I'm gonna get the overall like buy-in, okay, for, you know, why this module's in the training, right? So uh, it's very important, right, to me, you know, for that part, right? Because if they don't get the buy-in, if the, if the student doesn't get the buy-in, they don't understand why, you know, sleep is important, then, you know, they're not gonna read the thing, right? So again, at the module level for me, typically I'm gonna have a, a video, that you know welcomes them to that section or that module and explains the why. Why are we doing this? Sorry, why are we doing this? Okay. Um, then as we get into the you know topic level, okay. So this one is more of a you know high level like why are we talking about sleep at all, right? So this so for this I would maybe so in this module introduction, okay. Um, I would probably it would probably contain a single video, okay, and that video would talk about why sleep is important. Okay. And it would cite studies talking about, you know, um, you know, how, you know, all kinds of things like, you know, people who are sleep deprived, you know, are very similar to people who are under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Right. Um, and, you know, sleep is actually sleep deprivation is actually used as torture, you know, and then all these different things. But basically, you know, my job, if I do it properly, when I get out of uh, the video in the module level is the person reading or watching is convinced that what I'm telling them is something that they need to learn about and, and implement, okay? So that's kind of the point of that, all right? You may have more than one video for that, okay? You know, um, I, I almost always can get away with one, you know, for, for this, but it may require more. If you need more than one video, kind of at the module level, you may, you may need to make that two modules, right? Or something. Uh, you may need to, to break that up. And I could have chosen to break up sleep into two modules, one module hardware and one module software. Um, hardware meaning um, things that, you know, uh, like machines that can help you with sleep, okay? So like, for instance, um, Aura, an Aura ring, right, is this ring that you wear and it keeps track of your sleep details or like an Apple Watch with a sleep app, right? That could be considered hardware, right? Then there's software and software is what we're gonna call really habits and, you know, things that we do, right? So, you know, like the sleep hygiene that I was talking about, going to bed at the same time and all that, that would be more of what we call the software level. So I absolutely could have broken up uh, this into two modules. So, um, uh, or yeah, for this one, it would have been module level. Yeah, so, so it could have been, uh, it could have been uh, module one uh, sleep slash hardware, module two sleep slash hardware, okay? By the way, those terms hardware and software are very common in usage in the biohacking world. So people who aren't familiar, are you're gonna help teach them some of the industry lingo. People who are familiar with it are going to be uh, more comfortable because you're using the language that they're used to hearing, okay? All right, so again, module level is typically gonna be an introduction and the buy-in, okay? That's typically what that is, is gonna be for. All right, once we get to the topic level, the topic level, really, you know, again, it's going to be, you know, um, you could call this maybe category and subcategory, right? There's different ways that you could choose. There's different terms you could use, okay, to talk about this. 
Um, and it doesn't matter what terms you use as long as you're consistent throughout and as long as it makes sense to you and to your student. So again, for me, topic one could be sleep hygiene, okay? And then all the steps are how to do sleep hygiene, okay? Um, another step um, in here, okay? Another step in here could be, um, you know, uh, hardware, right? I could choose to have that as its own step and talk about the R ring and, you know, the Apple watches and all those kinds of things, okay? Um, I could also talk about devices in the hardware section, okay? I could talk about, um, you know, the chili pad and the, um, uh, I can't think what the other one's called, but there's several different pieces of equipment that you can buy. Um, one of them, like actually, um, I've used all these by the way. Um, one of them is like, it's like an air conditioner for your bed. You actually hook up this machine under your bed and you stick it up under your sheets and it blows cold air out. Okay. So it's kind of like, imagine a fan underneath your sheets. Uh, but the end of it looks more like the end of a vacuum cleaner, like the, the little hose thing. Um, than like an actual fan and there's nothing, you know, turning that can, you know, hurt anything. Right. That's one. And then there's a thing called a chili pad, which I use also, which is, uh, it's a little thin pad about that thick that lays down on your bed and it circulates cold water through, uh, to, to cool you off. Um, but anyway, so, you know, those that could be like, you know, another topic. Okay. And steps underneath those, you know, again, so let's say, you know, um, could be, that could be, you know, I could talk about the individual steps to setting up the chili pad, right. Or the individual steps to setting up, you know, the Apple watch. Right. Um, so, um, that's, you know, that's kind of how, how I do these. Where are we, where are you guys right now? Is this, is this, give me some feedback if you don't mind. Um, actually just type some stuff in real short. Is this making sense to you with, kind of how I've organized this with modules, topics, and steps. Um, is it, does it, you feel like it's something, you know, that you could kind of implement? Um, you know, there's other tools as well that you could use. Like I, I mentioned, I use other tools too, depending on what it is. Um, so, and again, I'm not, not, you know, it matters, but I'm not saying that this is the best way or the only way or anything like that. Okay. I'm just saying that this is how I do it. Um, and um, I do, I do have the method number two and I wasn't going to cover that tonight because of time. Um, and I still think though, I don't think we're going to be on here much longer unless y'all have questions about this. I think this is fairly straightforward. Um, and this is kind of one of those, you know, there's going to be topics in here that are not going to be fairly straightforward. They're going to need, you know, lots and lots and lots of uh, steps and stuff. But this part, what's most important is that you use that whatever system you develop that you use and it's consistent, you know, in your mind and the student can understand it. You know, think about user experience the same way. Like if you went to walmart.com, right. And, you know, even if there were not like titles to some of the sections, you could probably find what you want because the way that you navigate Walmart is the way that pretty much everybody that has an e-commerce store, you know, does it right. Because that's what we're used to, right. It's our user experience. It's the same, same thing as if you have never used Microsoft word. Okay. But you've used notepad or WordPad or one of those things, you know how to use word, right. Um, so, uh, let's say, yeah, so let me see com comments, comments. Okay. So far, everything's good. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good point. Good point. Caleb, um, Caleb is talking about how he likes to use the, the intro video, you know, as motivation. I like that too. Um, very, very cool. Uh, yeah. X mind Steven. I like that one as well. Um, I, I used lucid chart mainly. And the only reason I used it is because, is the first one that I found that actually did it, you know, that I understood how to use. And once you get quick with the tool, um, the reason why I switched to MindMaster is really because uh, they have a lot there. There's lots of, uh, so the templates in Lucidchart are all in Lucidchart, but the templates in MindMaster, let me show you that too. That's what's cool about this. When you go to uh, templates in MindMaster, they actually take you to another site and um, I'll show you. Um, okay, here's these and yeah, see, okay, down here it's a, so they've got a lot of stuff built in. Okay. And there's some really cool stuff in here. All right. But if you look at the very bottom, it says, couldn't find what you're looking for. Browse the public maps universe. Okay. And when you click on this, all right, and this takes you to another one. These are all free and there's, I don't know how many there are. There's, there's, yeah. Okay. Over 300,000. Okay. It's crazy what they've got in here. So, you know, I mean, there's just, uh, where, where is the, why is this not loading up for me? Okay. I don't know why the education didn't load up. 
Uh, that's strange. Hmm. Okay. Well, anyway, there are literally thousands in here, over 300,000 you see as you go through. Um, and so there's a good chance that, um, you know, what you're looking for, you know, cause again, I don't use this just for courses. I use it for other stuff too. You know, I use it for like, you know, making the mind maps for my, you know, uh, SEO, like the people that I use my VAs and stuff, right? Like how to do their tasks. But if you look through, there's just, dude, there's just tons of these. And yes, there's uh, different languages and that kind of stuff. Um, and of course, in the main one, I'm going to go back. Of course, in the main one, you've got all of these standard kind of things like Gantt, right? And those kind of things. So um, let's see. Uh, hold on one second. Uh, lesson plan. Hold on. Okay. So this is kind of a little bit kind of like how I'm, I'm doing that. Um, company or chart. But anyway, there's, if you need, a lot of these are really cool um, because, um, uh, you know, they're like, they already have like steps in them. Some of them, they're really kind of crazy. SWOT analysis, decision matrix. And there's just, there's so much stuff in here, man. There's so much stuff in here. Um, but anyway, um, that's why I moved over. Um, but once you have one, again, on the free account, you can have up to three. Um, but this sucker here, man, once you get it going, I mean, you can make this thing, I mean, you can branch this out to the point of absurdity. Um, like, you see how I'm making it small? Like, it's crazy, right? So I'm saying you could have hundreds or thousands of steps in one mind map, okay? This thing is gonna be able to, you see this? Okay, so that's the smallest level that it goes to. Okay, so at that point, it's gonna be hard for someone like me to, to read it. Um, and uh, where's the recenter? I think it's this one. No, hold on, I managed task. Oh, there it is. But this little button here always puts you back in the middle. So if you get way over here somewhere or something, um, but anyway, the standard view. So point being all of that is, I think that you would be very, very good um, with just uh, three. So th this is one mind map, you get three for free, okay? So um, I don't think that you'd need any more than that. If you do, um, the plan that really would be good enough is four ninety five a month, and I was paying eleven ninety five a month with the uh, Lucid Chart. Again, another reason why I switched. Um, but anyway, so making these very very simple, you know, and because of the space that you have, it doesn't matter how many of these there are. You could have, you know, you could probably have easily have, you know, twenty or thirty or forty. 50 things over here before it might get unusable. So if you really have, you know, something that just has tons and tons and tons of steps and remember too, you know, you're not like, these are really the way that I'm doing these is typically, you know, most of these are going to represent a video, right? It doesn't have to, but I'm saying that's for this. So that's pretty much what, what we're going to have, right? Each one of these, you know, bubbles represents a video, right? Um, so we could go in or again, you know, this could be, you know, sleep hygiene could be one video. It just depends on how long it is. Right. I mean, like, and how, how you want to do it. I mean, because honestly, you know, I could talk about the why, you know, for, for sleep hygiene, I could talk about that for an hour or more. Right. Because this has been researched to death. If I wanted to, I don't think it's valuable enough to do that. And I'm not going to. I'm probably going to, I, when I end up making this course, I'm probably going to have this. So these four boxes are going to be one video. So, so far I would have one module video talking about sleep overall, why it's important. And then I'll have a video about sleep hygiene. Um, but it's good to have these steps here because that's going to, again, it's going to remind me what I'm going to be talking about. Um, and also if it's, if you take the time to write this down, then you can go ahead and, you know, you could mark these in your video if you want, like timeline market, right? Like you could say that, um, you know, uh, uh, talking about, you know, like you're, you're you know, establishing a schedule, like bedtime, you know, is, is, you know, 30 seconds in to three minutes in, you know, and then the temperature, right, is this to that. Um, and also, I'll tell you this, uh, people who are visual learners, especially, they're going to get more value out of this than out of your video or maybe even as much. Um, either way, doing this again, not only helps you, um, you know, get your, get your thoughts out and organize it in a, you know, a meaningful way, um, keep you on topic, but also for your student. Um, and I'll tell you that there is a very high perceived value by a lot of people 
on these actual, on having these mind maps. Okay. So, um, there's I'm not, I'm not, you know, well, I'll just ask the people that are on here. Um, if you would feel like, you know, it's a good, like you're getting extra value, you know, or, you know, the membership that you're paying for is better because the course provider gave you these, right? They actually gave you these mind maps in the course. Give me a one. If you think that it would be good and it provide, you know, you'd feel like better about your purchase. Give me a one, give me a two. If not, um, I think most people, you know, again, I wouldn't consider it like, you know, a selling point, right? I don't think that people would necessarily say, well, you know, if I don't get the mind map, you know, then I wouldn't, you know, buy it. But I think that they would absolutely say, so yeah, everybody's given a one, everybody that's on the webinar is given a one. And so, you know, again, just like anything else, we could spend hours, you know, sometimes talking about all of the whys. Um, but just trust me on this. If you're not bought into it yet, um, having a tool to organize, you know, your course outline is going to just be something you're going to appreciate. And boy, I tell you what, when you go back later, um, and you know, like, especially like if you're updating a course or whatever, these are going to be like gold to you because I can tell you, like I've had courses that I've had to go back and update and I'm watching them sometimes. And I swear, I don't remember even, I don't even remember talking about this particular topic in a video sometimes. I mean, I'm not kidding. Um, and I'm not getting a Alzheimer's or anything. I'm just saying, you know, your mind kind of is really weird the way it works on what it remembers and when it remembers what it remembers. Um, you know, basically there's certain types of information that it considers temporary. So you're going to remember it for, I'll tell you the perfect thing. I, I think this is, I think it's technically called short term memory, I think. Um, but for example, um, if you are ever like a food server, they, so like I, I was a waiter for, you know, a couple of years when I was in college, um, I could walk down, you know, there'd be like 20 people. I could take all their orders, right? All 20 people, you know, and all the different ways, the special ways they wanted this. Oh, I, I want the number four, but I want it with wheat instead of wide. And I want, you know, mustard instead of mayonnaise and I want extra ketchup and you know, blah, 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 blah. Right. And then you can take 20 people's orders and then go back to the register and ring all of it up. Right from memory. But if you ask me their order, literally 20 minutes later, no way, no way. It's gone. It's just gone. Um, that is, again, I think it's called short-term memory, um, but that's how it works. So this is a, you know, a fantastic tool, you know, again, for you, um, it, you know, initially um, and long-term, you know, because a lot of you are going to have courses that you update um, because, you know, like we've, we've talked about briefly, you know, in one of the webinars, you know, as you're setting up your course, you want to be thinking, and this isn't the only model, okay, but the model that, that I like to follow and the one that I feel like has had the most success um, is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give Russell Brunson the credit for it. I don't know if, you know, he created it or if he's just the one that kind of made it, you know, solidified in my mind. Um, but Russell Brunson, you know, talks about basically, you know, having a, you know, having like your front end offer, right, your front end product having a, you know, a continuity product, which is basically what everyone else would think of as a residual income product, right? Like a monthly, you know, thing, and then a high ticket item, right? Um, you know, and that, that's typically going to be something like, you know, a high dollar coaching or mastermind or, you know, a live event or something like that, right? So how, how when you're selling courses, you know, the traditional way of thinking about it is really one or the, well, it's typically either, I'm either going to sell a course for a set amount, you buy it once and it's yours forever, or, um, you sell it as a monthly service and, you know, you pay, you know, monthly amount forever. Right. And that's kind of it. It's kind of done, but the best model in my opinion, and I believe this has really been proven, um, is where, you know, you're going to have that blend, right. Where you're going to have, you know, uh, uh, multiple products, but it's, but essentially to have, you know, typically you're going to have like that front end offer and your front end offer is typically going to be more of a, you know, um, more of a, a, um, a lead, not a lead, a tripwire, more of a tripwire kind of thing, right? Something that's almost irresistible, right? Like, you know, these are typically things that are very high value and very low cost, right? Subjectively, uh, to get people into your funnel, to get people, you know, where you can have the permission to market to them, right? Then after that, you're going to either sell them like, you know, your core product, right? Which is going to be, you know, like your, you know, so say you have a, a, a lead magnet, okay? So you have a lead magnet and say you're doing a course on, um, SEO. Okay. I'm going to use SEO because all of you here, I think do SEO. So say you're going to do a course on SEO. Okay. And that's your core product is, you know, Steven's SEO course. Okay. Um, then my lead magnet, right. My lead magnet could be, or my front end offer, right. 
Um, it could be a $9 course on how to get into the snack pack, okay, into maps, uh, or how to, um, you know, kind of dominate the near me searches, okay, something like that, right? Uh, and it can be very low price, right? So that's our kind of our front end offer, right? Bring them in, and then we're gonna pitch our core product, right? Our core slash continuity, right? So core could be like, you know, $500 course, $1,000 course, $2,000 course, right? Um, your continuity products could then be, you know, uh, either offering your core product at a monthly rate, or it could be um, like I typically like to do, and I think it's very justified in SEO. It's not always justified. You can't justify this in some niches. But SEO changes so often, and I have to spend so much time and money um, staying current and testing things that it's very legitimate to say, okay, I'm selling a $2,000 SEO course, and that includes, you know, let's say six months of updates, right, or something like that, or a year, right, whatever you decide. But after that, um, if you want updates, you're going to have to pay, right? I have to continue to pay money forever, you know, to do that kind of stuff, right? Um, so, and then your high ticket offer for SEO, you know, could be, again, it could be very expensive coaching, you know, $5,000 a month, you know, coaching program or, you know, a, a conference, you know, $2,000 conference that you have, you know, a couple hundred people at or something, right? So always be thinking in, in terms of that kind of stuff. Um, but you're going to have, you know, essentially mind maps for each one of these, right? Um, so, you know, this could be a kind of a deal where you would maybe want to move into maybe like the four ninety five a month, you know, or use one of the free products. Um, there's, there's other, there's multiple, the people just on this webinar could probably mention to me a half a dozen other ones. Okay. Um, this is just the one that I use and the one I like. So, you know, I don't intend for our training, you know, or like our Facebook group or our webinars to ever be like me teaching you how to use this software. That's not a thing, right? If you, you know, Trust me that this is a good software and you go ahead and get your free account. You start using it. You have questions on how to use it. Best to ask that to the people that made it probably, you know, I mean, I don't mind if you shoot a question in the group, but you know, to me, that's more of being self-reliant, right? You know, learning how to use this software is really probably not the best use of my time. You know, um, as far as teaching and working with you one-on-one, -on -one, it'd probably be better to ask your fellow students, you know, and if everybody uses it, then our group could be a great resource, right? Because people are going to be like, oh yeah, you know, if you have a problem, probably someone else has that problem. Uh, all right. So let's see. Lots of good comments here. Um, yeah. So, uh, Steve, another great point. Um, you mentioned that on the last webinar that we had, um, that we talked about using, um, I don't know if I brought it up or someone else brought it up, but it's definitely a thing uh, for me using a, a free Udemy course, um, you know, as like your, um, your, your tripwire, if it's free, right. If it's truly free, right. It'd be a trip. I'd be a, uh, uh, I'm sorry. It'd be a lead magnet, not a tripwire. I probably said those backwards. Oh, all the terms. Lead magnet is something free you give away in exchange for an email address, typically, okay? Tripwire is a low-cost item, okay? So I probably used those backwards. I apologize. Um, but you absolutely could. So you actually could use that as a lead magnet. You could have a – because, as I mentioned before, on Udemy, if you want to make money in some courses, you have to uh, have a pro account. Um, but with a free account, you can um, create courses uh, that are free that you give away. And there's never a cost to you. So, you know, it's legit free. And there's other ones that do that too. And we're going to talk about that more as we go down the road uh, for sure. But that absolutely could be a very good, you know, kind of a thing, right? Um, and remember this too, as we're going through this and we're going to, we're going to talk about, I mean, trust me, when I set this thing up as a monthly membership and like a longer thing, there's going to be so much stuff in this as time goes by. Um, I know that the members area is a little bit bare right now and I'm going to work over that a lot over the next week or so. Um, but as we go through, there's going to be, Dude, there's going to be so much stuff because there's so much stuff to show you. So, you know, like even with just like lead magnets and tripwires, I'm going to show you exactly how we build ours out for our real clients. Okay. And there's some software that I use that's fantastic for that, that makes it like really where a monkey could make, you know, these lead, lead magnets and tripwires, you know, and very, very easy, very, very quickly. We're going to show you how to do that. Um, we're going to do some real ones for this course to sell this course because I told you, you know, um, we are going to be, you know, using some of the train, not all of it, but some of the stuff that we're going to be doing in this course, we're going to be doing, you know, for real, like to show you as we're doing it. Right. So like when we're doing, you know, we start doing more ads, like say Facebook ads for this course, we're going to make that a module in the course, right? We're going to literally make the ads that we're actually using and, you know, to promote people to get in the course. Right. So, um, but yeah, that you to me, that's a very good point. All right. So, um, We've got about 15-ish minutes left here. We started pretty fast and furious. 
Um, and there's not a ton of people on tonight. I don't know, probably it was probably my, my schedule change. Um, you should have gotten an email on that, but and this may just not be a real convenient time for people, so I do apologize for that. Um, we are going to definitely do one next week, but it may not be Monday, but I'll try to let y'all know as soon as possible um, when we're going to be up and what we're going to be doing. Um, we are also working on the fast start, like we talked about, you know, the kind of the all, all in one kind of mini course uh, to get that going. Um, but again, my goal for tonight, uh, just want to make sure that I hopefully, it, excuse me, achieved it or came close. Um, you know, based on just watching this, you know, uh, give me a, a three if you feel like, you know, you understand how I've organized this and you feel like you could do this for your course. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Caleb mentioned he's got his bookmarks bar. That's a really cool thing too. I like to do that for, um, for resources especially. You know, depending on what kind of, depending on how much your course relies on things like references, you know, having a bookmark folder, you know, we're talking about, you know, like in your browser, right? Actually going over here and creating another folder in, in your bookmarks. Um, what you can do, I like to do those for, you know, scholarly journals because you have to do a bunch of, of you know, uh, annotating, right? You have, to, you have to list all your sources. Um, so, but it's good even if you're not doing scholarly stuff, right? Um, if you're using third-party resources a lot, it is a good, so let's say, let's say that there was a website that I was just really, you know, or let's say, okay, I could create a folder called sleep, okay, in my bookmarks bar, and then any topics or any web pages, right, any pages or sites that I am using, right, uh, for content, um, you know, whether I'm, you know, straight up taking it and giving them, you know, a reference or whether or not, or I'm, you know, just using it to develop my own information, you can, you know, so I could have one, one bookmark folder called sleep, right? And then I could put all the different websites and resources that I'm using into that. Um, and I definitely do that. Um, I, I agree with you, Caleb. I think that's a, a really, really smart way to do it. Um, I do think though that, um, you know, again, I think that the perceived value of the mind maps is really, really high and man, in some, and I guess, again, it's probably because of the way some people are very visual learners, but I have some seen some people go absolutely, you know, nutty over these mind maps in a good way. You know, like, um, I'll tell you, um, uh, building out PBNs, um, for example, is one of those things where, you know, I've seen some pretty crazy mind maps, um, you know, uh, all the different steps, right? Um, all the different steps. And I've seen people, you know, just be like, I just, you know, I just love them, right? And I think that some people's minds just, that's how the, it works better, right? Um, I'm, a, I'm a pretty balanced learner. Um, I like auditory because I tend to remember anything that I hear, but um, I also speed read. So um, I, I do like written. I think I like all forms of learning. I don't know. I'm a learning. I'm a, I'm a junkie. I'm an education junkie. Um, I am, you know, I am definitely, you know, uh, someone who's, you know, into learning. So um, another great point, uh, Stephen. Uh, Stephen mentioned that if you're uh, logged into your Google account, that you can access those bookmarks from any computer. That's that's an excellent point. Um, I love all those self collaboration tools. Um, and we're going to be going, you know, at, when the course is done, we will definitely, you know, each section will have the tools that we use in it listed and, you know, all that stuff. And some of the stuff I'm going to tell you up front, we are going to be having affiliate links for. Um, I don't feel bad at all about if I introduce you to a tool and you use it and it doesn't hurt you, you know, for me to make a little bit of money if you use my link to buy it, you know, and especially if it helps you, right? Like uh, places that I can get you a deal you know, for using my link, I don't have any shame about that. And I don't really, you know, I, I buy through affiliate links all the time. I mean, in fact, I probably buy most of my stuff through affiliate links, right? Um, I think it's a great thing, you know, um, but always remember if for some reason you just, you just, that makes you mad or whatever, you don't like me that day, everything that I give you access to or show you, you know, you can, you, you can use without that, right? Like for instance, there is a, a an affiliate program for MindMeister. Okay. I, I could have, you know, set that up and giving you my affiliate link for this. Um, but for something like this, I think that most of you are going to be fine with the free account. So, you know, I think on this one, it's not really worth the time and energy, right. To, to try to set that up. But if it were, I would, and I hope that you, you know, guys and gals use it. Um, there may be a time down the road, I actually hope that this happens. I don't know. So, you know, definitely don't hold me to this, but I actually kind of hope that somewhere down the road we'll be able to offer this course just for affiliate uh, like compensation. 
meaning that the people who join like somewhere way down the road, you know, don't have to pay, you know, me directly anything, but let's say, you know, they sign up for, you know, as an affiliate of mine for like two or three, like, like click funnels, let's just say, right. Let's say, you know, we're using click funnels, right. And you know, I get like a 40, I think it's about 40 bucks a month is what I get per person on click funnels. So let's say that, you know, you signed up for, you know, click funnels on my affiliate link and you signed up for something else that was, you know, 40 bucks a month or something, right? Well, that's $85 a month to me, right? So I, what I'd like to be able to do down the road, if possible, is that's how I'd like to charge for it because you're going to have to pay for them anyway. So that just means that, you know, you're not getting double charged, you know, um, if it's tools that I really feel like you need to use or kind of have to you know, then I think that'd be awesome. And I may do some SEO stuff that way too. So some of you who are, you know, on here that do SEO stuff, don't steal my, my uh, ideas, please. Um, but I do know that a lot of you are going to do that stuff. And I obviously don't have trouble problems with y'all creating SEO courses. Um, but all right. So let's see. Um, I'm reading question. I don't know, um, Caleb, that's a good question, but um, I think I, I'll tell you what I like to do. Here's, here's my standard operating procedure for this. This will be in the actual you know, course. Um, and it doesn't always work because it's not, I, I, want, I want to try to provide the most value, but also I need to make the most money, right? I mean, I want to be paid for my work, right? And for my information. Um, I want y'all to get the best value at the same time, right? I think we both should win. I don't think it should be just you know, I give away, you know, this super valuable information that changes your life and I get pennies for it. I don't think that's fair. Um, also not fair for, you know, me to charge you, you know, ridiculous amounts of money um, for, for, you know, bad training or whatever. But um, what I typically like to do SLP wise for a course and what I think is, is kind of fair, I like to have the video, okay? In fact, I have videos in all my courses, okay? I like to also have, make the MP3 available okay so the sound file of just the sound file available uh some people like to listen to those okay and they can listen to them you know like when they're driving or when they're you know exercising or something right uh lots of training you know does involve like today there were some visual elements to it okay um but um some trainings there's you know hardly any you know uh, visual elements so something like you know the, so i like to have the video available the mp3 available um and then the last thing i like to have a um a transcript um which requires me, you know, I can try to use some free services like YouTube and there's some stuff like that, but it's more of a pain in the ass normally. It's worth it to me typically to go ahead and use a transcribing service. Um, and um, I'm going to talk about this when we get there, but I use the one, it's the cheap one. It's not the one ever, it's not Rev. It's the one that, it's the one that Rev owns that's cheaper than Rev. So it's something with a T, I can't remember. Um, but their, their uh, transcribing is, you know, about 90% accurate, maybe 85, 90% accurate, but it's the cost is like 10% of what Rev costs. So ideally for my course, and so the mind maps are, you're not going to get a mind map with every single, you know, training. I'm not going to do that because it's not valuable. I don't think the time and energy it takes me to do that unless I'm doing it all in the pre-stage. If it is, then I'll just give it to you, right? Um, and in some courses, it might not be worth it, right? Like some courses, there's some courses that y'all may have that may have, you know, one module, right? Could be a one module course, one module, one topic, right? You know, um, there's lots of things that could be that way, okay? So for some of those, I'm not going to go to that trouble. But at a minimum, I like to, whenever possible, um, I absolutely like to have the video, the sound file, and the transcription. Um, and the other thing about transcription, which is nice, is that, um, you know, typically you can use a search feature, whether it's through Google search on your site or through the software that you're using to host your content. And then that makes it keyword searchable. So it almost makes it, you know, so like if someone is trying to, you know, if someone, uh, those of you who are here, who are in here from OMG, which I think almost everybody that's on this webinar was in OMG either now or at some point, that's one of the hardest things about going through OMG is finding content, right? You're like, Oh, I remember Steven did a video about blank and you know, they want to ask me and I'm like, I don't remember. Shit. I did videos for three years. I can't remember exactly when I said that exact lesson. Um, I understand why you're frustrated, you know, that you, you know, it's not organized in some way like that. Um, but that's one of the advantages to doing the transcription. Once you do, um, like if you're doing a basic site, so let's say, you know, you have a regular, you know, like WordPress or something, right. Um, site and you add Google search to it, which is free then if you put all those transcripts, right, then if someone is like, oh man, what was that software that Steven talked about for doing mind maps? Oh darn it, I can't remember what it's called. You could go to the search bar and just type in mind map, right? 
and then it would come up, right? Because we talked about mind maps in this video. Remember, it's a transcription of the conversation. So I've said the word mind map at least about 10 times in this video. So with that feature, then you'd be able to find the video real quickly and then scan it and find the software, right? So I hope that that makes sense. Um, and when I do the video about that, obviously I'll have the name of the thing. It's killing me. I can't think of it right now. Uh, again, it's something it's, it's not rev rev is the one that I used to use and it got too expensive. Um, if you type in like audio transcription or video transcription, it's probably on page one. T Timo, Tivo, T Timo, Tilo, I can't remember. But anyway, it doesn't matter, I guess. Um, all right, so that's pretty much it. That's all I was wanting to do for tonight. We are right almost exactly at an hour. Um, so any last parting questions? Um, I will let y'all know when the next webinar is going to be. Uh, oh, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, Stephen, I wasn't talking about Dragon. I'm talking about this is a service. So you go, uh, I don't know if you've ever used Rev before, but you go to their website. Um, I'm just going to do it while we're here. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's called Temo. T-E-M-O is what I think it's called. Uh, no, that's not it. Hold on one second. Uh, audio transcription service. All right. Okay, there's Rev. So Rev actually created this other service that I'm talking about. Teamy, there it is. T-E-M-I, I was close, I said T-E-M-O. <laughs> All right, this is the one. So it's 25 cents per minute, okay? Rev is a dollar per minute, okay? So if you think about like this, these are, you know, these videos are on, or this webinar is an hour long, right? So uh, 25 cents a minute, right? So 60 times 25, right? So it's very, very, very affordable. Okay. Um, and again, some people really are going to, you know, find a ton of value in that kind of stuff, right? Ton of, ton of, ton of value. All right. But again, we're going to come back to this uh, later when we get to that actual section of the training, but I just wanted to show you because it's kind of where my thought process was, but, um, all right. I don't see any other questions. So if that's it, I'm going to go ahead and call it a day. So again, appreciate you all. Thank you for being here. Um, if you want to invite people, I'd appreciate that as well. Um, we will have our training next week. I will let y'all know as soon as I know when it's going to be. Um, uh, there is going to um, also be a um, uh, more you know videos obviously added to the membership area. You know over the next few weeks, uh, a ton more actually probably. Um, I just have to get with Josh on kind of which ones we're each doing, and we're supposed to talk about that tomorrow. Um, so, um, I think that's it. Uh, let's see, Caleb, I'm not sure what you're referring to. If it's something I said, I don't, I don't remember. Uh, I may have been considering doing something. Um, I'm not sure if I, if I did and I forgot about it, my apologies. And I'll, I'll, I'll get you on the next one. I promise. Um, I, I think maybe there was a marketing thing I was thinking about doing, but I decided to wait because I think what I'm going to do is actually, I was going to send y'all to something that I use, but the person that makes it is in the process of, of making it better. They're coming out with a major revision. So I think that's probably what you were referring to, Caleb. Uh, I think I mentioned that I may have a, uh, oh, I know what you're talking about. Okay, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mentioned in the group that because of all the problems with the rescheduling that I would throw something in extra there. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't. I don't have anything right now. Sorry about that. I promise I will though. Um, thanks for, for keeping me honest on that. I totally forgot about that to be honest with you. Space. Um, but I, I plan on throwing in lots of bonuses here. Believe me. Um, believe me, believe me. So, um, thanks for uh, reminding me, Caleb. Really, really appreciate that. Um, keep me honest. I want to make sure that I definitely don't want to be one of these people that, man, there's some people that I follow online that, man, they make all kinds of promises and just break them hundred percent. And it just cra cracks me up when I, see people just going back to them over and over and over again. People talking about giving away, you know, $10,000 on this day and giving away cars and giving away all kinds of stuff. And then the time comes and goes and nothing's given away and nobody's like, Hey, where's the car? Or where's the money? I'm like, Oh my God, I can't believe you people are still listening to this person. Um, they've been lying to you for years. Um, anyway. All right. Well, again, I appreciate y'all. Thank you for being here this evening. And um, I look forward to seeing y'all sometime next week. We may, because this is Friday, I may push it back to Wednesday or Thursday or whatever. Um, I don't expect any kind of issues, you know, with the uh, virus as far as affecting this. 
Um, as a matter of fact, I think I'm going to try to do a, a kind of a, a big promotion uh, this coming week, not to take advantage of the virus, but the timing is actually, uh, the timing, this is actually, so there's a lot of people who are out of work right now, which is obviously horrible and, you know, I pray for them and I hope it gets better, but um, this may be, uh, there may be people who are off work, they're not fired, they just can't go in or whatever, maybe they're still getting paid and they've got time, you know, so this may be, uh, I think I'm just going to do some kind of a promotion or something to talk to people, you know, and say, hey, you know, this may be a good time to start your side hustle, right? Start a side gig or something, you know, if you've ever been considering, you know, doing something like this, maybe this is a good time to start. Um, and so, you know, cause I, I know several people who are, they're still employed, but they can't go to work right now. So they're just sitting around, you know, you know, wasting their brains away on Netflix. Right. Um, which, you know, I could, I could talk a lot about wasting your brain on Netflix, but we all have our own opinions about things, but I'd much rather, um, be spending my time on doing something that could make my life better and, you know, my family's life better and, you know, other people's lives better than just mindlessly. Ugh. anyway. All right. Again, thanks you all for being here. And um, I will try to have this video up. I know a bunch of you joined late. So um, I will definitely try to have this up, you know, by probably tomorrow. So really, really appreciate it. Thank you all. And I will look forward to seeing you all next week. Thanks.